It's time for help. Look at all that money. You have the money that they spent. Take another look now and take some time for him. No cut trees for paper, cause it hurts the environment. Stop deforestation, yeah, it's time for him. Oh, an acre of hemp makes 20 barrels of oil. Mm. No need for pesticides to poison all our soil. People got no food. Got no clothes, they got no rest. Well, it's time for hemp. And it is time for hemp. Thank you for stopping by today. I'm going to be letting you all know what's going on with our Twitter feed and our Facebook Live group feed. We like to use that as a way of sharing information about what's going on in the cannabis, i.e. hemp, i.e. medical marijuana movement all around the world. Also, don't forget, you can go to our website, timeforhemp.com, and check us out. We've been working diligently on the website, and uh, here's what we're trying to share with you. And uh, as you can see, that is the Time for Hemp, a website there. People want to know, we got time-for-hemp.com is a place to check out. And uh, this is our little player. We broadcast on iHeartRadio through Spreaker. And uh, you can listen to us on our website. Just listen by clicking the play button. And uh, first thing you hear, I think, is a commercial from... Uh, <laughs> Plant what you need Grow marijuana More than a weed to get you higher For centuries Hemp was used extensively Anyway, you get the idea. That's our 24-hour day, 7-day-a-week, all cannabis, all the time feed. And uh, our blog is back. When you click on that, you get a check it out uh, our blog's been down and we've been uh, having problems getting our archives organized because of comcast blocking the server i think uh, we shared with you uh yesterday and yesterday's broadcast well uh, you can now go and find our blog again which is great and uh, for those of you who are interested in finding our archives you can click on our network archives and it will take you to our network archives page and you look for the program that you're interested in and in this case this is time for hemp and i've been around for a while all the way back to 1991 golly anyway and you can click on whatever year you're searching for and then when you get to that page uh, these fonts will be larger later i just had to quickly move the whole website uh, after Comcast blocked them on the server and uh, I, just to make sure that they were organized and accessible and you find a program that you like with the guests like here is Dana Larson and Kelly Kristen you click on the date and it pops open oil. Mm -hmm. Don't need and of course you can always right click and save it to your computer download it and put it into your mp3 and share it with your friends so uh, we try to make our information available to everybody for free and easy to access we've got uh, lots of cool things we like to think on the website we've got uh, places to uh, laugh if you want um, takes a minute to load in as you can see And we got editorial cartoons, and we have links to uh, funny uh, material about cannabis here. And uh, then, uh, if you enjoy more fun stuff, you can meet the Hempsons, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, the Simpsons did a uh, segment on medical marijuana where Homer uh, decided to invest some time in growing. Maybe he didn't know yet. Um, and 
cannabis and maybe he thought he might even want to use it and uh, so I went down and chatted with Homer and Bart and while I was down there I did other interviews as well so you can check those out and there's lots of fun stuff that you can enjoy and here on Bud Comics that is the uh, guy who did the cartoon on the home page that you saw when you first uh, started checking out the website <clears throat> and uh, why I uh, went ahead and put that on the home page yeah well one he put me in the comic strip which I thought was pretty pretty nice pretty flattering but because of uh, the problems that we've had with our archives disappearing and our newsletter still gone and our blog site still disappearing uh, well I thought that was appropriate so we do hope that you uh, make it a point to go to the timeforhemp.com website often and check it out and share it with your friends there are a lot of uh, great features on there there are apps you can you can download you can also uh, find us on Twitter like I said you can get the iHeart app we, we, we got an Android out there and uh, of course we got a Spreaker app and all these great apps and you can also find us on Facebook and YouTube and we're on Roku TV we got a Roku TV channel and we get a great little gift shop like anybody else so you know uh, it's easy to, to navigate, we like to think. There's a lot of great information on there you can have for free. All of our podcasts are free. And uh, so, even music, you find a free song that you can download on darn near every single page. Uh, if you just look a little harder and uh, download some free music and share that with your friends as well. There's a lot of talented musicians in the marijuana movement who could be earning great uh, awards on the uh, billboard charts but because their message is all about cannabis mm -mm -mm, uh, they'll never be heard but they'll be heard on our network and uh, like I said our network is 24 hours a day seven days a week all cannabis all the time and uh, but we have two or three hours of music and then we got about an hour of talking heads where we have interviews with patients and doctors and lawyers and scientists and politicians all who are focused on ending the war on drugs and making cannabis legal and hemp a fantastic cash crop from coast to coast in America also we want to put a spotlight on a friend of mine that uh, I did an interview with a long time ago Dennis Perone this is his website uh, I mean well his uh, profile page on Facebook and uh, you can also do a Google search on him and learn a lot he's on Wikipedia as well and Dennis has been a hard-working activist for a very long time he's actually considered the, the founding father of the medical marijuana movement and uh, Dennis started out I met Dennis when I first started working in Jack Harris office Jack hired me to uh, get the t-shirts out and the books out that had been ordered and to organize his office while he was on the road promoting this cool book called the Emperor wears no clothes and the first time I met Jack was at Jack's uh, beach house there on Venice and when I walked in there there was Chris Conrad and his his wife Mickey Norrison and there was also Dennis Perone there and uh, see Brownie Mary and a handful of other Dr. Todd McCurria and they were all working on an initiative to end cannabis prohibition for medicinal purposes and to bring back the industrial hemp plant to make it possible to create the 50,000 different products that are available to be made through this plant here in our country. And uh, Dennis has been a hardworking activist for a very long time. And uh, long before there was even a thing called the marijuana movement, we think. And uh, Dennis is having problems these days. He's uh, dealing with cancer. and He's gotten up there in age as well. And uh, with the way medical science is today and the cost of um, medical care and the difficulties of getting insurance and coverage, Dennis is struggling to even get transportation to and from his medical care for his cancer let alone get the medical care that he needs and uh, so what we're asking is that maybe you make a donation to uh, Dennis 
and uh, maybe help him be able to get around a little easier by helping him to either fund a vehicle or uh, public transportation or some sort of way to get to and from his medical treatments and just give him a little love if nothing else and you can always find Dennis uh, on Facebook as long as he's still around we thought we lost him a while back and it was pretty scary and uh, I've known like I said I've known Dennis for a long time when I was at uh, the Nor National Normal Conference in 1991, I believe we were celebrating High Times' 21st birthday. Anyway, um, I did an inter interview with Dennis Perone that I'll be showing here in today's segment. Uh, but uh, before I do that, I'm going to cover what's going on in today's feed on Twitter and on the Time for Hemp live Facebook group site after this message. Sirius Seeds is your source for quality cannabis and sativa seeds. Sirius Seeds are the creators of legendary strains like AK-47, Bubblegum, Chronic, Cali Mist, and White Russian. The AK-47 is probably the most awarded strain on the planet. The high THC content of AK-47 makes it the perfect medical strain for patients seeking quick pain relief. Cali Mist is an almost pure sativa. Female medical cannabis patients have reported that this strain helps relieve menstrual cramps. Sirius Seeds just acquired another Dutch high quality seed bank, Magus Genetics. From now on, Sirius Seeds can offer you even more award winning strains. The fine folks at Sirius Seeds strive to breed the best cannabis genetics that they can find, so patients can rely on the effectiveness of their medicine. Go to SiriusSeeds.com to grow your medicine. That site again is SiriusSeeds.com. Hello! One of the things that we're going to cover today on the feed in our postings is how the Colorado farmers are having to fight to get water for their plants. Now, does that make any sense to you? I mean, everybody knows farmers need water, right? Well, apparently there's some kind of federal law that prohibits farmers to use water for cannabis plants, medical marijuana plants, industrial hemp plants. They don't care. You just can't use the water for those nasty, awful plants. Well, make it a point to see what a couple of senators in Colorado are trying to do. And if you find that article to be of interest, please pass it around, share it with your friends, give it a couple of likes. And uh, also, you might write us at uh, here at Time for Hemp. You can send a letter to Casper at timeforhemp.com if you'd like. And if you have an article or a report that you'd like to have us share with our audience, please make us aware of it, and we'll be happy to do so. Thank you, and remember, the next time you see me, you'll know that it's time for hemp. It is always time for hemp, right? And uh, we ask that you go to our sponsors' websites and let them know how much you appreciate their support of this network so that our message can get out so that patients can get their medicine without being criminals and that we can end this horrible horrible prohibition and uh, there's a lot of good uh, things going on in the cannabis movement that if you just take a minute and look around it is kind of exciting that that is for sure can you believe it First, we were having arguments and discussions about should we call it cannabis, should we call it hemp, should we call it medical marijuana, should we call it medical cannabis, and then we have people going back and forth about the differences between hemp and the differences between cannabis and the differences between marijuana, and I mean, you know, after a while, it gets old. Well, now we are going to find out the differences between cannabis CBDs and hemp CBDs. Yes, now that is an ongoing discussion. And uh, believe it or not, there's a good article about it on our post today on the Time for Hemp group feed there on, on, on Facebook. It's the Time for Hemp Live uh, Facebook group. And we use that along with our Twitter feed 
to share information from all around the world and what's going on in the cannabis movement, the marijuana movement, the hemp movement. I don't care what you want to call it. It's the movement about this plant that is illegal. And until you can call it legal, well, I don't know why I even have that argument. But people will. But now we got something more to kick around. And if you find it of interest, please share it with your friends. Give it a like. And remember, the next time you see me, you'll know that it's time for hemp. Hey, it's time for hemp. As you can see, that is a shameless plug for the network because we are all around the world. As you notice by looking at our little website there, we are not only uh, on Facebook, but we are also on Twitter, iHeart, Android, Spreaker, Tumblr, SoundCloud, iTunes, Facebook, YouTube, Roku, Anywhere there is sound found on the internet, we are around making sound and we try to make it so that we're easy to be found by you and that all of our archives are free so that you can download them and share them with your politicians, members of your family or in your community who might be opposed to the idea of having medical cannabis uh, just down the street in a, in a Walgreens or perhaps having a farmer in their community growing industrial hemp for paper and fiber and fuel. Oh my, what a concept, huh? What a concept. So anyway, do make it a point to go to time-hemp.com and please make it a point to share us with your friends. Another post that you will find on the Time for Hemp live feed there on Facebook in our little group and on, of course, on the Twitter feed is an article about how it's taking root. And I mean, industrial hemp is taking root in West Virginia. In fact, it's a budding industry. Ah, I get it. Arc, 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 a budding industry. And uh, uh, actually, West Virginia has been a leader in the industrial hemp movement here in America. Though a lot of people don't know it because, of course, they're trying to downplay it. Uh, not not West Virginia, but our federal government. Because they uh, don't want all of America to realize just how wealthy all of America would be if we were using industrial hemp from coast to coast for our papers, for our fibers, for our fuels, for, ooh, let's see, about 50,000 other things you can make from this plant. So with that said, we can be independent from most of the imports that we have to deal with and we'd be able to compete uh, a lot better on the industrial lease uh, products on the international markets with uh, our competitors. So uh, I don't know why it's a well-kept secret by our federal government. Oh, that's right, lobbyists, industrial lobbyists from the wool industry, the oil industry, all of that list could just go on. But instead of making that list go on, why don't you go on to the Time for Hemp live Facebook group feed or stop by and become a subscriber to our Twitter feed and check out all the headlines, one of which today includes a report about what's going on in West Virginia on the budding, get it, art, art, budding hemp industry that is taking root in West Virginia. And remember, give it a couple of thumbs up if you get a chance to. And as always, share it with your friends. And remember, the next time you see me, you'll know that it's time for hemp. And we need to let the whole world know that it is time for hemp, that we need to start using this to save this planet. You know, when I first met Jack Hare, he told me that hemp could actually save the planet. And I kind of scratched my head and went, I don't think so. And he went, yeah, uh, actually, you better start thinking so. And so had better the whole country. And the more I learned about cannabis, the more I learned about 
how it cleanses the planet when it grows the soil. I mean, it's root deep down in the soil and keeps the top soil around and, and how important it is for our bodies to consume and how many products you can make from this planet. I mean, this planet, I thought, jeepers. And it's outlawed. And Jack's right. It really can save the planet. Well, I said earlier at the top of the hour, we're going to uh, share with you today uh, an interview I did with Dennis Perone back in 1991 in Washington, D.C. We were at the uh, National Normal Conference celebrating High Times 21st birthday. And Dennis and I had a chance to sit down. Dennis worked really hard on uh, making cannabis available to medical patients in his community and it was the first the actual first success that uh, we had anywhere in America of this type and uh, Dennis was the spearhead of it and it's an honor to be his friend please make it a point to go to his Facebook profile and make a donation to help keep him strong and keep him going and send him our love so after this commercial break we're gonna uh, check out that interview and I'll talk to you soon this week. And as always, remember, the next time you hear me, you'll know that it's time for him. At Grub King Seeds, we sell the finest marijuana seeds in the world. Grown organically with original genetics, every seed is cultivated for large yields, high THC content, and measured for both CBD and CBN levels. Did we mention we sell more than 20 of the world's best marijuana strains in feminized, auto-flowering, medical, and regular varieties, including White Widow, Blueberry, Purple Kush, Haze Extreme, and so many more. Through our website and friendly call support team, our seeds are available for direct order with speedy worldwide shipping. Crop King Seeds are also sold in over 100 locations worldwide. Excuse me, I'm looking to buy some Crop King Seeds. Look no further, my friend. <laughs> wow, they're here and in so many strains. Buy your seeds now, in store or online at CropKingSeeds.com or call us toll free at 1-844-CROP-KING. That's 1-844-276-7546. Joining us today on the program was one of San Francisco's hardest working activists, Dennis Perone. Dennis has been working in the uh, gay, act, gay community, trying to change and make a difference for the people there, as well as working in the hemp community. And his political ideas and his political efforts have made a change and an impact on that city that will last for its history. Dennis, thank you for being on our show. Thank you, Casper, for having me. One of the things that uh, I was talking about in regards to the changing of history in San Francisco is Proposition W. Some people nationally are aware of it, many aren't. But uh, what you did with Proposition W is really a landmark. Well, I'll tell you what happened. It was uh, <clears throat> Proposition W and Proposition P ar uh, arised out of a marijuana bus that I had. I was busted in 1977. I used to run the Big Top Pot Supermarket. Okay. And it was a one-stop pot supermarket, one-stop shop for all your pot needs. Okay. And it was a very elaborate setup. And uh, when I came when I came to San Francisco, I had trouble buying pot, and I had to like kiss a lot of ass, and I had a lot of uh, hassles getting pot. So I just decided to start a pot supermarket myself, or sell pot myself. It evolved into a supermarket because there were so many different kinds of pot and at that time and different prices and everything. So I, uh, I tried to get as many different kinds of pot together in one spot as I could. Okay. And the, um, the idea grew and grew and grew. And before you knew it, I had three scales, 15 people working, I had four people that all they did was roll joints. And um, every night we would sell pot to about five, 600 people. It was a very elaborate setup, beautiful house, and customers were treated with dignity and respect, and no one was ever gypped. In 1977, I got busted, like I said, and uh, we had a four month trial after I got busted. I didn't mention that I. I got shot during that raid. Um, in the leg, right? Mm, yeah, I got shot in the leg. Um, what it was is the, the supermarket was 
going down and uh, I heard a ruckus at the door and I went to the this stairway to see what was going on and I see this uh, guy coming up with a gun, big old floppy hat and fatigue jacket. And I think the first thing I think, of course, is a rip, mm -hmm. that these guys are gonna rob us. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I do is grab something close by, which was a empty Alhambra water bottle, and I hold it up the stairs like, go down the stairs and we'll forget all about this. Mm -hmm. But before I'd even got the bottle up, the uh, guy had shot me. And he got me with the first shot and threw me back. And then another shot went past my ear. And this was the point where I was convinced that these guys were murderous rip-offs, that they were going to kill everybody in the house. So I was willing to give them everything I had, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy comes up the stairs and puts a gun to my head. And I'm thinking that, goodbye, Dennis. Fortunately, another guy comes in the room. And it turns out he's a cop. Turns out they're all cops, much to my surprise. Uh, so I was shot, and I remember the day that, that day they were taking me out of the, uh, the house on a stretcher. And out in front of the house, there was five or 600 people that had gathered around the house, mainly my friends and customers. And when they took me out, I shot a peace sign to those people, and the whole street screamed. Dennis, Dennis, <laughs> Dennis, Dennis. That kind of support must have helped you heal. And it did help me feel a lot better, even though I know it was kind of curtains for the big top. Yeah. That was an end of an era. And, and that's that, when you brought forth Proposition W. Now, what's Proposition W exactly? Proposition W, like I said, arose out of the, bat, the bust, and I knew that people in San Francisco wanted marijuana legal. I knew that because we had a 1972 referendum on Proposition 19. It was a statewide thing where San Francisco voted 52% to legalize marijuana. So I and my friends went out and collected 16,000 signatures to put a, a referendum on the ballot. It was a local initiative, but it out and out legalized marijuana for cultivation, sale, possession, anything you wanted to do. If you wanted to take a bath in it, you could do that. Okay, now wasn't that contrary to federal? It's contrary to state and federal. But um, the way I see it, San Francisco is very unique. It's a city and a county. We elect our district attorney. We elect our mayor. We elect our board of supervisors. In many ways, it, it, these people are responsible to us. Okay. And also to state law, but to the people that elected them. And so I directed at the chief of police and the district attorney, seeing that those two people were mainly involved in the marijuana prosecution and arrest. And uh, it won by 58%. Excellent. I collected those signatures just before I went into jail on the Big Top Pot supermarket bust. I got six months, and uh, while I was in jail, there was an office opened for a charter commissioner. My friends got the papers for me, and before you knew it, I was a candidate for office while I'm in jail. <laughs> and also, Proposition W was given a letter designation, and that was going on. What a turnaround. <clears throat> I like to say most politicians, um, wind up in jail, but I started my political career in jail. <laughs> so I figured I'd skip a step. Uh, well, in November came around, I got 20,000 votes and came 300 votes shy of winning the election. Whoa. Proposition W got 50, over 58% of the vote uh, to become technically the law of San Francisco. Okay. And the will and the spirit of the people. Well, I had allies in the um, political arena. My main ally was my good friend, Harvey Milk, the first gay supervisor ever elected in the nation. And my other ally was George Moscone, the liberal mayor of San Francisco, who was a friend of the gay community, who was a friend of the potheads. And it was just a friend of the, the, the uh, weak people and the, the people that had no voice. You know, you said that the assassination of Harvey Milk had really changed uh, the course well, before I was to leave jail, Harvey and George would be dead. Killed by an ex-Marine, an ex-cop, an ex-fireman, an ex-supervisor, who went on a Twinkie-eating, Coca-Cola-laced rampage and politically assassinated Harvey Milk and George Moscone. The bullet that ripped through Harvey and George's brain set the gay movement back at least 10 years. And everyone knew that. 
but not everyone knew that it's also set the marijuana movement back 10 years. Mm -hmm. That we had this victory, and the, pe the two people that were going to see it enforced were now dead. And the guy that did it is claiming he ate too many Twinkies, that's why he did it. So needless to say, Proposition P W got put on the back burner and uh, kind of forgotten, including by myself, because like Harvey was my friend, and I, uh, I couldn't even think about Prop W. All I could think about was revenge, revenge, revenge. Harvey is dead. George is dead. We've got to get, we've got to try to get back our power. I know we can never get those two men back. So I ran for Harvey's seat. I fortunately lost. In retrospect, it's fortunate. But uh, Proposition W was quite forgotten. Not by me, but by the politicians and by the police and by the district attorney. But then over the years, you've made it a point to bring a lot of uh, awareness to people about the hemp movement. I well, you know, marijuana, we've always had the, all the issues on our side. We've always had the truth on our side, but I've really found out 22 years, truth is not enough. And that um, in many ways, people are brainwashed. And so I, I know that we can't rely on people's brain anymore no. in America. And that, in a way, we have to rely on the only thing that seems to be left, and that's their heart and their conscience. And right now, San Francisco is going through a very serious AIDS crisis, as America is. And uh, we have a lot of sick people. And we have a lot of dying. And we have a lot of pain. And out of that pain arose Proposition P, the medical marijuana initiative that I just put on the ballot this year. And I understand that the success of that has really rocked the nation, and we'll be talking about that just as soon as we come back. Welcome back. We're talking with activist and political leader Dennis Perone. Now, Dennis, you commented that this particular proposition rose up out of the AIDS community and the pain and the suffering that you saw uh, for uh, the relegalization for medical uses is what this is all about, isn't it? It's true. It's what it's about. Well, let me tell you something about how it became into being. It was January 27th, 1990, that we were sitting home. It was about midnight and we were just ready to go to bed. When I hear a knock at the door, and I'm going down to answer, before I get down there, a sledgehammer breaks the door down. And in come these five people who claim they have a search warrant. My immediate reaction that these guys are rips because number one, I'm not even dealing. But they're not rips, they're cops. They claim that they heard somebody, somebody said that I had marijuana for sale. On that basis, they got a warrant. They found marijuana in my house. They found four ounces of marijuana in my house. But what they also found was my very sick best friend dying of AIDS. And their behavior that night reminded me of what the Jews had to go through during the uh, Nazi era. My very sick friend was thrown on the ground with a gun to his head. The son I raised was intimidated and brutalized, thrown on the ground. That night we heard gay AIDS jokes, gay jokes. We were physically and brutally intimidated by these thugs who found four ounces of marijuana in my house. Okay. They arrested me for the four ounces. And nine months later, I was exonerated because the four ounces of marijuana were claimed by my very sick and dying friend, Jonathan West. Before he died, he testified that the four ounces of marijuana in the house were his, and the charges were dropped against me. Two weeks later, he died. No, was he using these for this marijuana, the, the hemp, for medical purposes? Yeah. Because now we've heard on this show and from other sources that it can be helpful in relieving pain. It can be helpful in taking care of nausea, helping with the easy pain, the nausea, increasing appetite, etc. Uh, Primarily, why I did it because it, marijuana was keeping Jonathan alive for the last three years of his life. He had no appetite. 
He had everything. He had cancer. He had pneumonia. He was 90 pounds. Mm. Marijuana was literally keeping him alive. It was offsetting all the side effects of the AZT and the chemotherapy and all the myriad of drugs he was taking, legal drugs, that had severe side effects from depression to vomiting to diarrhea. So then you took this and you went out and put together a proposition. In memory of Jonathan West, his yes. eulogy, I collected 16,500 signatures to put marijuana as medicine on the ballot in San Francisco. I never dreamed in my wildest dreams that we would get 80% of the vote. But in fact, that's exactly what happened. Now, what does the wording pretty much specify on Is it strictly for medical purposes? Is that how it's worded? Is there? Yes, it's strictly for medical purposes. It's only for people that have certain ailments that are covered under the initiative. So now, does this mean that their doctors can prescribe it or that if they're just caught with it and they have uh, proof of a certain ailment, then there's no prosecution? Well, legally, uh, Proposition P has no stature. It is merely an advisory to the city and county of San Francisco. However, I think the district attorney can read numbers, and I think that he knows that the people of San Francisco are serious. As a matter of fact, we got more votes than the district attorney. Okay. We're the highest vote getter in San Francisco history. Now, how many districts are there in San Francisco? There are 628 precincts in San Francisco. There are 11 different districts. Okay. Now, you brought in, a, in what, 30 of, those, 30 of those precincts? In the gay districts, we had 30 precincts. It was 100% for Proposition P, not Excellent. one dissenting vote. And Proposition P seemed to have crossed all the boundaries. I know that everyone thinks San Francisco is kook city, and in many ways, it is kook city. 40% <laughs> of the people are totally kooky, <laughs> but 80% aren't. And I think that is a telling thing here, that we have crossed the kook boundaries. We've gone beyond kookdom. And we even got the elderly people to vote for this. And as a matter of fact, I had elderly people call me up to me and say, Dennis, you know, I used to use this stuff when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. My mother used to give me this for et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. She used it for a rheumatism. She used it for a bronchitis. And uh, they actually had a tincture they put on people's knees and joints for arthritis and rheumatism. And so we even got the old people, and I know that people think, well, older people are very much against us. Wrong. Older right. people are against drug use per se and drug abuse. But quite frankly, I'm against drug abuse myself. Mm -hmm. And so we are talking of medicine. We know we haven't changed the law. However, we have given the people of San Francisco a defense in court. Okay, now, is this defense good for strictly uh, residents of San Francisco or if somebody's from New York visiting because they know that they're not feeling very healthy and they are looking for an avenue which they can uh, relieve pain that to show up in San Francisco as a tourist to take care of this problem? Or Well, uh, it does seem to become that San Francisco is going to become the lords of America because after the election I had gotten phone calls from all over the nation. Mm -hmm for the people from multiple sclerosis to cancer and this and that. And they're anxious to come to San Francisco, but now, because now they think they can get treated. And now, are they also going to be able to grow it, raise it? Well, so, like I said, Proposition P has no legal stature. However, there is a political aspect to San Francisco uh, P that makes it very interesting. It was during a mayor's race that Proposition P was on the ballot. The top two vote getters are now in a runoff. One of them is Frank Jordan, an ex-police chief, who is trying to be a liberal. And one of them is the incumbent mayor, who is a liberal. They have both been in contact with me, asking me how they can help enforce Proposition P. Excellent. Excellent. I am playing that card. I am playing each against each other for the, for the betterment of this country. And do you think you're going to be able to get this to spread out now through not just the state, but do you think this will start big popping up now? In like new well, York, my Chicago? new demands are um, six plants, six plants per, per, per uh, AIDS patient, per cancer patient, multiple sclerosis, whatever you got, six plants. You're allowed to grow your own six plants. And 
what I'm really asking for is de facto legalization of marijuana for cultivation of marijuana for medical purposes. I can't ask, I, I am asking the city or county of San Francisco to look the other way. Okay. When they see six plants growing in a window, to just look the other way. I, I know I cannot change state law out of San Francisco, although I do believe the state of California is ready. And we are taking this initiative on the road. Our next uh, targeted location is Santa Cruz, California. Okay. And after that, I want to take it to Humboldt and Mendocino and to Los Angeles, uh, right into the belly of the beast. Okay. Now, if someone, how, how do they protect themselves? I mean, if they're growing six plants, do they have to have a statement from a doctor saying that they are AIDS patient or cancer patient? Well, that's exactly patient? what we're advising patients to do, to get an advisory note from their doctor okay. that says, if marijuana were legal, I would prescribe it. And that's all, because like, doctors cannot legally prescribe it now. Uh, I do believe that there will never be another prosecution for marijuana in San Francisco again. I believe that because I am going to stand in the way of anybody that tries to prosecute anybody for, for um, marijuana in San Francisco. Proposition W, it was at the right time, the right place, but Harvey dying and George dying screwed it all up. But I intend to bring up Proposition W the one I put on before, along with Proposition P, to try to make San Francisco the place we wanted it to be. Excellent. And uh, I want to, you know, let you know I, I've been aware of your work in the movement for a long time, and you know you've made quite an impact on many of the activists coast to coast, and are looked upon as one of the most intellectual and hardworking leaders in what we're doing. It's been an honor to have you on our show. Thank I'd like to have you back again. You come with so much knowledge and information. We have a lot of stories. Anytime you want me back, Casper, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. And i also like to have you realize that anybody can get out there and join this fight. Anybody can make a difference. The important thing is to get up and do it. Until we have the opportunity to get together the next time, keep strong, keep happy, keep wise.